Uh, there we go. So welcome to the Go Team Coach Call for the 23rd of October, and we got about just about a week, a little bit more left uh, as we close out October and head into November, which will be Double Time Month. You guys are all aware about Double Time is coming out, so that'll be kind of interesting. Debbie, I'm wondering, like, I'm wondering about you and your kids. Like, yeah, maybe. I don't know. That might be kind of a cool thing. Jen, your kids, I know, maybe, may, maybe a little young. Because uh, you're three. Are they threes? They are. I actually have 14, 11, and then the twins are three. So the 11 and four, 14 might be, yeah. Uh, I'm going to try <laughs> to bribe my 16-year-old into doing at least a workout with me. Uh, and just say, honey, I promise I will buy you something nice. <laughs> um, so I thought I'd, I'd, I'd at least give that a shot. And she's generally game for things. The filming part might be a little bit, at least we can take a picture. Maybe that was a little bit. You know. <laughs> I know mine will be up for it. No, oh, that's great. Good. How, anybody else? Claire, how about you? Are you going to be able to uh, capitalize on some double time? Oh, I hope so. We'll see what my kids do. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to try. Yeah, just gonna <laughs> approach it from, like, and just say, I got this one thing. First person to take up, pick me up on it. Gets, gets it. That's a good idea. And make yeah. it a little compact. I think, well, hey, sorry you didn't, you know, first person. There you go. Yeah. So good maybe, deal. Like, yep, yeah. they're, they're not doing soccer anymore. I mean, you know, it's... yeah. Mid season between seasons, yeah. So, hey, this will get a, keep them in shape. There you go. <laughs> hey, Heather's getting on. Oh my gosh, how good. It's Heather, nice to see you. I'm glad you're going to get on. And looks like we've got 305. I think that's uh, Miss Leslie. Are you down there, Miss Leslie? Yes, I am. Woohoo! Good deal. <laughs> how you been? I've been good. I've been good. Slowly good. getting back at it. Good deal. Awesome. Nice to hear. Um, so guys, we're uh, in, and Melissa, that you're there. How are you? Nice to see you in your smiling face, hey, Melissa. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. Considering I have a concert tomorrow night with 160 middle schoolers. Oh, good times. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Two things about that. Sorry, this is this has nothing to do with this call. But two things, talking about gifting and and like trying it. So I've got like I love. I'm like the encourager creative, right? Uh -huh. That's my kind of my two probably main like an encourager and I'm a creative. So the creative part we're actually able to engage to some degree, but uh -huh. the encourager man when it comes to middle school it's been a rough suit to, i just can't use that card very frequently yeah. my kids are they have had no discipline before me and so i just have to like lay down the law like every day and it's so exhausting oh my word i was telling jen about this uh earlier it was like oh my gosh it's so mentally i don't know if you guys ever been it's in the exhausting it's teaching situation yeah when you have yeah. to have like the neurons are firing so fast to make decisions because there's so much input coming from different angles right is this person gonna act up or is this person and blah blah so anyway. so so i actually teach uh special ed middle school yeah. so yeah, I, I i totally get it <laughs> yeah. who's gonna what firecracker is gonna blow up today uh-huh <laughs> yep. and then which one will then will set off the other ones in chain reaction, which is always fun. Yes. Yeah. That's always awesome when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so guys, uh, sorry, to, but that's where my life has been as of late. And that's probably to some degree why. So tomorrow night, it's done. And then I, like, I actually am really full-fledging into uh, the invite world to my uh, challenge that's coming up here. The best I'm doing a Best You Boot Camp uh, starting on the 6th. So that's going to be um, kind of a cool thing. Uh, anyway, that's that. Um, anybody else like any updates in your lives? How, how's things going? Um, we updated. So Linda, how you been? What's going on with you down in the Carolina? Things have seemed to be fairly quiet. Um, my father just start, moved back into the house after four months of being gone. So we're oh, wow. readjusting our schedule. Ah, um, so eating dinner a lot earlier. Um, 
not necessarily a lot earlier. It's just dealing with somebody with dementia. It's just a oh, I forgot. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. Light, making light. <laughs> Usually, older parents are eating at about dinner at three, right? That's the whole point. Uh, yeah, we well, eat at five thirty, so we're kind of early. Not too late. Eating. No, no, it's not uh, three o'clock, so that's good. So yeah, but other than that, we're doing okay. Looking forward to April. I have another grandbaby coming in then. Oh, congratulations! Thank you. Very cool. Oh, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Um, all right, guys. So, so let's uh, let's head into some. Uh, we've got some coaches who are going to be sharing a bit here. So we got Jen and Kelsey. We're going to share some tidbits today uh, as we head into, and then we're going to do a little bit with uh, some of the playbook stuff that we've been studying. Uh, so yeah, which one do you want to go first? Oh, Kelsey just voted for Jen. Because it's in order of, uh, of first name. <laughs> I was just gonna say it really, it really doesn't matter if I go first or not. Okay. Mine's pretty quick and simple. Good. What, so, what's your tip? So, we I ask these gals on a regular basis, and I'd love to have our coaches if, as you're learning things. And I don't care if you've been only doing this for like three weeks. Um, you probably will have at least something you might be able to teach a brand, like a brand new person or whatever. Someone just go, "This is something I discovered," and I thought it was pretty cool. And maybe everybody else is doing it, but just something that uh, could be the case that we'd like to just help equip with some specific and practical skills. And uh, so, yeah. So, Jen, share with us. Okay. So, um, my practical skill that I want to share with you guys is honestly just scripting. Mm -hmm. And and here's the deal. When it comes to scripting, I know it seems like it's awkward. You seem rehearsed or something like that. But if you make it your own to where it sounds like, you know, something you would say in your language, I promise you it's going to help you 110%. It's going to build your confidence. It's going to keep the system um, kind of regular. So instead of coming up with an idea for every single person that you want to talk to, if you have a set thing to say that you can just kind of alter it a little bit as you go, best thing out there. Um, I will tell you what, I just have been focusing on um, organization of my scripting mm -hmm. and finding a system that works for me. And so with that, um, basically, you're going to need um, scripts for your free challenges. You're going to need scripts for your premium challenges. You're going to need um, sneak peek invites. Um, you're going to need customer follow-ups. Basically, anything that you're inviting to you can have an invite a follow-up and then like basically a next step invite so um what i've done is i've pulled together actually several of my favorite invites that i use and i want to share them with you all um but i'll probably post those in the go team if that's okay well do you, have, do you share your screen um yeah actually i have a i think i have a docs thing up here that would be cool and the reason I share this, the scripting with you guys, is because it's like the key factor in building your confidence, like Dan says, and has said for so long, the first 500 are the hardest. So go for no. Go for those 500 because I promise you, it just starts to become natural. And once it becomes natural, you're like, oh, hey, I know what I'm going to say, you know, or hey, I already know what they're going to say back to me. Um, and I'm ready with the next response. So you don't sit there questioning, oh my gosh, what do I say now? Or, you know, you're not messaging us, guys, what do I do now? It's like, I already have a set example of what I need to do or say, and here I go. And yep. that will just really help move your business forward. And I tell you what, once you, once you just get comfortable with the uncomfortable, you're going to do awesome. So um, let's see. Dan, how do I just hit share screen? Yes. Okay. You got to share which window. It'll ask you which window you want to share. Boom. Can you guys see? I can. Okay. So I have got I to only find see my. Like, the, like I see the. Yeah. I only see like the. There you go. Okay. Uh, you guys can see that right there? Yes. Okay. So with my scripts, I want you guys to know that I also have an app I will talk to you about next that I put them in my phone as well. So if I'm on my mobile, I have, I still, excuse me, have access to these scripts. So this one here is a little bit longer. It says, hi, you know, say, 
Uh, hey, Debbie, I'm not sure if you've seen my posts on Facebook, but I run online health and fitness groups that are super fun, motivating, where we can focus on getting healthy and fit and truly making it a lifestyle. I am super excited to share with you that my fellow coaches and I are hosting a seven-day challenge called Clean Week that starts next Monday. And then you can insert the date. Um, and this was made for the 23rd. Um, I am so excited because this is a new program and we will be testing and or we will be testing it out together. This challenge is all about building healthier habits one step at a time, teaching you how to prep your meals for the week, how to get started with a free beginner's workout program, and we'll show you what this lifestyle is all about. I am not sure if this is something you'd be interested in, but I wanted to ask because I think you'd love it. No pressure, but if you'd like more info, just let me know. Now, I like the whole, if you, you know, like the no pressure, because immediately that kind of takes the, the ease off of, or I guess it puts some ease into it, is what I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and Dan, I don't know if you use that or not. Um, okay, so the only, the only thing that I might add, or at least tweak just a smidge here at the end, uh -huh. is, is just the whole point of, uh, it's the, the call to action quicker, okay? So basically what you've done, I'm not sure if you like something you'd be interested in, so you're asking there, and then, but I wanted, but I just wanted to ask, which we know you're, so we can we know you're asking it, right? Uh -huh. um, so I don't think you need to necessarily reiterate that. Just get me a little quicker to the point of, hey, we just wonder if you'd like to hear the details. Here's some details. Okay, yeah. And I, always I love that word on the details. Um, as a final ending, I like to hear the details, question mark, bam. And then versus the ending there where you'd say, I'd like to hear someone just let me know, it's kind of like, it's like, a, it's it, it, the excitement kind of, pans down a little, little. bit yeah <laughs> okay, so you guys feel that a little bit should... and i'm not trying to be critical but i think that that's where my my feel goes on it um so but no you know and i wouldn't even like the no pressure i don't I, um because i think that when we say the word no pressure sometimes it actually is there's a you well now that you bring it up it does sound like you're being pressury you know what i mean right. almost you know what i mean <laughs> you're almost like bringing it up or it's like hey no i'm just excited and again, especially you're inviting them to something like a set. If you're inviting them to a full out, like from cold to a 21 day or something like that, that may be a different story. Um, and right. especially if you're doing this, the clean week or the like a free challenge, that's where it just the deep, just hey, wanna, but, like here's some details. This is awesome. It's going to be great. You know, so, should I, mean? I just, do you, so would you just do, would you like to hear some details or? So, yeah. Um, Let's say okay. It's like it's all about. Um, like hear more details. Uh, let's see. Free beginners workout program. To show you what the lifestyle is all about. Um, love to have you join us. Would you love to hear some deeds? I wouldn't even go. I'm not sure if this is something you'd be interested in because okay. I'm not. So that's kind of filler for me in terms of the. Love to have you join us. Uh, comma. Would you love? Would you? Uh, would you like to hear some details? Got it. Oh, here. <laughs> yep, that's good. Oh, gosh, I'm a spastic typer. Question mark, yeah. Okay, perfect. And I'll say that. I mean, that's where you can, so, even, uh, you know, and if you wanted, if it depends on you getting your personality, you could add the exclamation point even after that. Like, here's some details. Yeah, and I usually do that as well. Um, that's great. Control save. Okay. So, and this is actually for all of us to use. Um, and I know that what we'll do is we will, like I said, we'll all tweak it to sound like ourselves, and we'll all tweak it Absolutely. based on our challenge. And if um, you liked it, so guys, if you like that other form too, I'm not saying that that is, but just my experience, whenever you kind of let down at the end and then there's no real call, like the call to action isn't clear, just let me know. It's like, well, what does that mean? It's like, it's like well, it's like, well you're like, here's some details. And then they can either say yes or no at that point versus eh, just let me know. And you're like, well, what do you want me to say? Yeah, I, I guess I'm interested. Is that what you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Whereas this is like, would you like to hear some beats? Yes or no? Almost. And hey, and then yeah, you follow up. Hey, did, did you get that? Yes or no? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm all good or whatever, you know, and then that's a go for no. Thing. And I haven't had too much issues with it so far, but I think this will get better direct to the point and make up some quicker yeses or nos. Claire, so awesome. Claire, are you on? You there? Yeah. Oh, yes, I yeah. am. You remember, uh, I, I, I always think about Erica Buzzard when I think of this. I think she, remember her scripts from that one Super Saturday? 
Yeah, like, I like, yeah, I have them somewhere. Like, and she <laughs> flat out would go like something like, "Are you?" So you like she'd even go even further. She'd go like, "Are you on to hear this?" Like right now, like she right now, big, yep. big, like almost in your face kind of like direct. Which is her personality a little bit too. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I could try that, I guess, but uh. I don't know. And then, so like at the second okay. one, you'll see like, would you like to be included in the group? So that immediately asks the question. Yeah, no, I like that. Which is, which is just a different version. Yep. And then I'll roll through these. Um, and then of course there's responses after they reply. Yeah. Um, if they, you know, if they say yes, you know, awesome. What interests you most about the group? That that immediately gets that them talking to you. And then also the Facebook algorithm, as you're on Messenger, Absolutely. they will start seeing your posts more often. And so when you're inviting to these challenges and then they're going to your page and actually seeing your posts more, it kind of reiterates what you're doing. Um, it kind of just brings back to them to see that this is real. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, and again, I, like I said, I'll just roll through these. Um, if they are responding to one of your Facebook posts, event page, start with this message. Um, you know, again, I'm excited that you're interested in, my, in joining my seven day clean week challenge group. And then do you have some fitness goals you're working on? That is asking them a question about them. It shows interest. It shows that you really do want to know about them and, you know, what kind of things they're looking for. Yeah. Let's see. Um, response. It, I mean, seriously, guys, I have like. No, yeah. I, we probably don't have time to go through all of nope. them. And I, and yeah, I would definitely want to, to put post got, them in the club. So tell us what you do. What do you use to actually have? What's your technique for having them on your like available on your phone as well as on your computer. What do you do for that? Okay, so basically if I'm working, I do a lot of work on my computer at home here just because it's easier. Mm -hmm. um, but when I'm always, when I'm on the go, when I'm at, you know, picking up my kids from school and people are messaging me, mm -hmm. um, if I have that little bit of extra time, like say I'm waiting 20 minutes at the school for school to get out, yes. I will take that time to actually jump on my phone and try to get back to people. Um, it's not necessarily a part of my power hour, but if it's something I can do to save some time later, I'm just that person. Yep. So I have, there's several things you can do. You can copy and paste these, um, these invite scripts into your phone. Therefore you can just copy paste it and throw it and throw it in a message. Um, or if somebody replied back to you and you need a follow-up message, you can go in your phone, hit follow-up messages, pick what you want to uh, copy paste. And again, okay, so are you starting this in a note then, Jen? Is that what you're saying? Or yeah, what? it's actually, okay, so there's several. You can go, and I know y'all probably can't see my phone. No. Um, yeah, no, it never works, does it? So yeah. I have an app called Notability. Now, I do pay for this app because it, it is amazing. It organizes, it highlights. I can literally draw on my scripts. Um, I can... I can edit, copy, paste, I can send PDFs, I can print them all from my phone yeah. if I needed to. And so um, there's several free that's apps. Notability, well. and that's a great one. Also, Evernote, guys, is a free. Yep, Evernote is what I use on my computer. You can also use your Google. If you have a Gmail account, Google has some amazing, um, you know, just even Google Docs where you can post your scripts in there. And it can be downloaded into Dropbox, which is something I know Dan uses as well. Yeah. Do you guys, I, anybody, quick before we move past that, does anybody use Google Docs for this kind of stuff much? I do. <laughs> yeah. The only reason I don't use it is the copy-paste function when it comes to the phone is just really wonky. Yeah, that is. That's terrible. And sometimes it, it comes back funky. Yeah. So to actually get it to, and then when you format it back in your thing, you're like, wait, all my spaces are gone, or all my line breaks are gone. And then it makes it just this one giant paragraph. That was my only thing about that. Evernote tends to hold it better for me. So, and I would yes. think Notability probably does too as well. So, so there's um, Supernote, Evernote, um, and then I have Notability. And then also on your phone, your phones always come with a notepad. You can use that as well, which is excellent. It's just harder to organize because um, it doesn't actually give you files to organize it in. Yeah. Um, my notability, it does. I can create my own files specifically for scripts or specifically for my links. And I can literally just copy paste it and keep on moving yeah. forward. So I think she, I think you mean folders. Is that what you say? That yeah, folders. Yep. Yep. So actually sorting by folders versus having a whole bunch. Because like if you do it in, on, a, on an iPhone, you do it in notes, it's just literally going to be no, 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 no. It no, is. No. Yeah. And it's really hard to keep track of. Sometimes difficult. 
So, yeah. But having it readily available helps out so much because you don't have to think twice. You have it there, you change the, you know, you insert the name and you keep on going. Great. So um, for my tip, that would be it. I would say, you awesome. know, if you're, if you're new to this and you're worried about what to say, start scripting. That's, it's mm -hmm. going to help you tremendously. Great. So Jen, can you uh, stop your share? Yep, I can. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if you figure it out. Um, there you go. Okay, and I would say this, guys, specifically as it relates, Jen, Jen great job. Um, as it relates to your scripting, the point being this, and I think people often get, so like here comes a situation and somebody asks you a question. And then my brain is literally just thinking, okay, where are they at in the script? Where are they at in the scripting process? And where do I need to pick up? Because I think a lot of people, when you get thrown that, then you feel like, so for me, it's like, um, you guys ever watch Chopped, right? You guys ever watch the movie, the, the show Chopped? So if you guys know the way that chop works, I'm not sure if you understand how those chefs work. They don't just automatically, I mean, of course, you know, if like there's crazy, some kind of, kind of crazy um, ingredient gets thrown at them, um, they still, what they do is they keep to what's familiar with them that they know that they can do and be successful in. And then they try to incorporate those ingredients, the weirdo ingredients into something they already know. Does that make sense, right? So then if they, their chances of success are a little bit better rather than going, okay, weirdo thing. And I'm just going to create something that's completely out of the blue that I've never created before. So what they're really trying to do is trying to help. Okay. Well, here's maybe five or six different things that I cook really well. I'm going to try to make this version of this using this weird ingredient or whatever. I would say that's sort of the same kind of a thing applies to scripting is instead of like going, this person throws this thing at you and going, well, I guess I'm now I'm going to wing it and just try to, Hey, I'll just, you know, no, let's just talk about the value of Shakeology or whatever. It's like, no, no, fit them into the script. Like, where did, where were they at? It's like, oh, did we talk about their goals? Did we talk about what they're doing for fitness? Did they talk about what they're doing for their nutrition on a daily basis? And when you fit them into that, then they start to fall in line. And then the process is a little bit easier versus like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Does that make sense, everybody? Just that you're following a process versus like being all random. Okay. Um, enough said there. Uh, Kels, you are up and would love to hear from you. Thanks, Jen. Great job. Hey, guys. Um, hey. I, I wanted to start off by saying that I know that a lot of our steps and our some, sometimes even scripting, um, scripting makes it tons easier, but it is somewhat a little overwhelming at first. Mm. Um, especially when you're first starting to invite, you're like, I literally have no idea where to start. And Jen just did an awesome job of explaining how we can start those conversations. But you need to realize that you are not going to be able to know all of that and get all of your knowledge like down pat on how to do all of these things without actually doing it. I've actually learned a lot by, me I'm just going to say it, messing up. <laughs> Um, and I find out later why I've messed up in my scripting or why I've messed up in certain invites. And it really does help for the next conversation you have, or even with the same person later on. Um, so don't think that you have to have all of that down pat and know exactly what to say all the time, because you're going to learn. You just have to do it. Yep. And, and overcoming that fear is going to help you tremendously. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit too about, um, how we can tell our story and how that can help us with our business like on social media mm. um, First thing I wanted to talk about was just be genuine and be real um, Again, don't try to act like you have everything put together all the time um, don't act like um, Like this is I, I, What do I want to say? I'm sorry um, You just don't want to act perfect we are, we're, we are still human beings, even though we're beach body coaches, because you not want to act like we're perfect. Um, and I know that we, a lot of us have great habits when it comes to this lifestyle now of fitness and nutrition, but I'm sure all of you have had mess ups and um, bad days. So we want to share that. Um, and the reason we want to tell our stories on social media is so we can connect with people and that people can relate to us. That's a great way of having those relationships and connecting with others and starting those conversations. 
Um, so it's not just about a shake and these cool, this cool beach body on demand thing. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little deeper than that. Mm. Um, and like your posts obviously don't have to be all beach body related. Like, it, I mean, you don't want to make it look like on your feed that it's just like infomercial type stuff. Like you want, you want to show who you are through your posts. And what I mean by that is like using daily life situations or things that you're going through or just something funny or quirky, but you can somehow relate it to Beachbody even. Um, it, and it gets easier as you, as you post. Like if you never share anything like that, it's going to be harder in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I, honestly, guys, that's part of the thing sometimes people are like, and I've heard this, like uh, s some people have said, it's like, well, who – my life isn't all that interesting. And so I just, you know, really like, so what would you say, Kelsey, to that, to, to a new coach who says, my life really isn't that interesting. I go to work, I come home, blah, blah. What do I like? What are people at all interested in me? Like what, what, what would you say to somebody like that? I would, the first thing I would say is there's probably other people on social media that think the same thing about mm -hmm. themselves. So, um, I mean, Dan, gosh darn it. <laughs> no, it's okay. I just, I, I, I think it's an interesting question to pose because I think a lot of people think this. And, and let's face it, guys, we all have, it doesn't matter how interesting you feel you are, but you all have dry days. Everyone has a dry day where you like literally go, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to write today. Like literally, guys, I didn't write even a post today. I've been so crazy busy with focused on my whole thing. I did not do a single post. I haven't done a single post, a non-single. I'll probably do something after this real quick just to go, hey, I'm still here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I literally said, like, it's been so crazy. And uh, so I'm just, anyway, all that to say. And sometimes I feel like we get into the, I mean, I feel like I get in the habit, especially right now. I feel like I'm posting a lot of the same things. So it is, I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy to always have something different, but just going through daily life and just picking different random things and somehow relating it to Beachbody or relating it to your life in general. Yeah. Or, you know, and, and you, you, part of the thing is you don't have to necessarily say like the word Beachbody guys, just relate it to being part of a fitness journey. Right. right? I, 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 w I very rarely use the word Beachbody in any of my, my posts. I'll, I'll mention my online accountability groups. I'll mention my, our, Hey, my recent challenge, online challenge did this, that kind of a deal. Cause here's the truth guys. I love as much as I love beach body. I'm still developing my own brand within this. And I want to develop my, it's, it's going to be a well-rounded brand, which will have, you know, the, that, that aspect to it. Of course, that's one of the things that I do within all of this. But if we, I think if we use that, you know, the last time I did my 21 day fix workout and I used these great containers, um, you know what I mean? Or something like that, like that, could, that starts to get salesy and then people kind of start to see through that. Um, however, you know, yeah. Anyway, so talk to me. Sorry. I remember at summit Shailene brought up, um, things about making people question what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't, you know, the breadcrumbing, yeah. you don't want to come out and just say beach body or Shakeology or the exact programs you're doing. You kind of want to make people ask. You yeah. want to count, instead of counting how many yeses or nos you get, you want to count how many questions you get. I remember her saying that. Um, it was people coming to you and saying, well, what is this that you're talking about? Yeah. Um, so you kind of want to give them some curiosity rather than just throwing it all out there. Yeah. Does that so, make sense? Yep. Yeah. Jen, I saw... Jen did that her uh, with those blueberry things you had the other day. Yes, the, 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 the no bake mini pat, the pies. Yeah, she mm -hmm. posted a picture, killer picture of them. They looked awesome, and, um, and like just just said oh, these were great. Bling. <laughs> she didn't even say, "Hey, you want a recipe? Anybody want it?" She just literally left it there. And then yep. people were like, recipe, recipe, please, please. Recipe. They did. And it's like, ah, so then I'm like, hey, join our group. And then they're like, okay, you know, woot. got probably like seven people that way. Yep. See, yeah. smart. Yeah. That's, that's smart strategy there. Right, guys? So if you're getting, you know, and then that's right where you have to start thinking about, okay, well, what does it look like for your next challenge? 
what's something like that that could do? It's like, man, if you're doing a water challenge, like post a really cool, great looking glass of water. Try to, you know, learn. If you don't know how to take a picture, learn. Like learn how to take a good picture. Use some good filters and figure it out. Like make it cool with some lemon, lime, whatever, and all that or whatever, you know, or whatever. That kind of stuff, you know. So just put some food for thought there. Kelsey, anything else? What were you t t telling your story? So I, sorry, I interrupted. That's okay. Um, the only other thing I was going to bring up is um, when do you post? Um, typically, I, I've had some of my coat, like my discount coaches who've actually talked to me about posting um, and they've been more interested in the actual coaching part of it. And they've right. said, so when do you know how to post? Like, how do you know how to do that? And basically guys, you just want to make sure you're posting when you think your audience is watching you. Um, I know that Jen, you're, are you a couple hours behind us? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So like, obviously Jen's hours are going to be different than the rest of ours. Um, but typically like my audience, which I'm really bad at morning posts because I'm not a morning person. I'm working on that. Um, but typically, a lot of my audience is really, really early in the morning, right before work, and then late at night. I don't typically get a lot of interact. Like if, if I do a shorter post around noon or lunchtime, people interact with it. But if I do a long post around lunch, not going to happen normally to get any interaction or anyone looking at that. Um, so it's normally around eight o'clock at night and then six to eight o'clock in the morning is typically when I get my best time frame. So you just have to learn, um, by looking at your posts that you do, when do you get the most action on them? When do you, when do you see that more people are interacting with it, um, and really enjoying them? So you need to just keep an eye out for that and then learn where your audience is at. Yeah. Um, and then be consistent with it. Consistency is a big thing. You want to make sure, which I'm also struggling at that. I'm not going to lie, um, but working on it. Yeah. And I think guys, the, the more you're able to have that consistency of, and, and it's like, guys, we have to really think of the, the whole social media thing is we are our own reality TV show to some degree. Okay. Just being real in that, that's kind of where we're at. And if people have an expectation for their TV, whatever t TV show that they're watching, they like con some consistency, but they also like some variety, right? So you don't want to, if you had like one stage and you watch the same rerun over and over and over and over and over, you, you eventually you stop watching that channel, right? But it's like, that's why there's episodes. It's like, oh, there's a familiarity here. I know these characters and now I'm going to watch more, right? And that's kind of the thing is that they start to build that affinity with you and sort of start to tell your story. That's why story, guys, is so, so critical to build trust. It's so critical to build trust. And then people will start to follow that journey. And that's why, like, I think, so, like, Kelsey and her pregnancy journey, people are following this pregnancy journey of hers, right? That's part of the deal. Um, and whether wh whatever journey you're on, necessarily, you know, honestly, so, like, Linda, I mean, I don't know how much public you want to necessarily be, but, like, you are now dealing with a... a a parent who's got some got dementia so that's a struggle man it's like how do i handle that physically how do i handle that emotionally mentally spiritually how you know how to handle all that and somebody watching that journey with you and walking along oh man that, that might be so encouraging you know what i mean that kind of a thing um so good um kelsey thank you for sharing and i think uh that's some really good stuff too really good stuff as well so ladies both thank you um, okay, so let's head in. We're just going to do um, about 10 minutes of Dave Ward's um, thing about personal development. Now, don't tune out on me, okay? Because I know a lot of y'all, I'm going to call you out because I know sometimes you don't do it, okay? And the thing being is if you do do this on a regular basis, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. It will develop you. There's a thing about the development. It's personal and it's development. It will develop you, okay? I promise. But without it, you probably won't. And I would say, okay, for those of you particularly, and I'm going to confess this to myself, or as myself as well, I have found that when I take, so first of all, I spend me some time with Jesus every day, okay? I do spend that time, and I love that time, and that's a restorative time, and it is great. I don't automatically say that then that is also personal development as it relates to this, 
okay? That's my devotional time, and that's part of it, and it will inform the other, okay? But we have to get a little bit more specific on some of the like skill sets or things that are like we're trying to develop within our business. So if we just go, I'm just going to do the spiritual level of things, social and trying to understand social media. I hate to say it, if you're reading scripture and you're looking for social media advice about when to post, that's going to be a tough find, right? I mean, to go actually go, oh, where's that? Um, so again, nothing against that time. So just so y'all hear me. But I'm saying that's like an addition. So I don't go automatically go, well, personal development when it comes to this. So I would just say developing this specifically. Now, I would say this, if you're going to go on bent. So there's a great, um, there's a, like, um, this is, again, my Christian world of this. Um, there's a guy, um, Michael Hyatt is one of them. And then Ken Blanchard. If you guys know Ken Blanchard. Ken Blanchard is a business guy who has kind of the Jesus mindset. And he has a whole thing is, is uh, it's um, lead like Jesus, I think is the book that they, they made, which I think was really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, he's got uh, some like pretty famous, like pastors like John Maxwell, Bill Hybels and things like that, that talk in this book. It's actually an audio book that I downloaded. So something like that might be more, you know, okay, just throwing that to you. All right. So I'm going to share my screen and we'll watch some Dave Ward. Boom, boom, boom. Make sure you can hear this. And I will go into theater mode because you don't really need to. Okay, here we go. And we are back with the playbook, which is our 10 rules for success with Team Beachbody. And hear? I am talking about rule number three today, which is personal development, one that is near and dear to my heart uh, because I really feel like it's a major, 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 major role in my success uh, with Team Beachbody. So I'll tell you a little story. Um, in 2008, I went to my first personal development seminar in August of 2008. Uh, it was it was the basic seminar from Sci Seminars. A lot of people have been through that seminar. I had no idea what it was. Uh, Monica signed us up for it um, through someone that she had met that thought it would be really great. And I didn't really, I was so busy practicing law at the time, I didn't even really question what was going on. And I looked at my calendar and I saw this thing and I was like, okay, why am I taking Thursday and Friday off work? I, I can't I really, really do that. And it's Saturday, Sunday as well. It's four days of my life. Seminars three days now, but at the time it was four days. And it's like, why am I doing this? You know, this is dumb. And I went and Googled it because I didn't know what, I really didn't know what it was. I went and Googled it and I found uh, a lot of people telling me what it was. And, and most of the reviews that I found online were negative. Um, you know, it was people who, you know, maybe their spouse had gone and learned about themselves and decided, hey, I'm married to a jerk and um, ended that relationship. The person blames the seminar, right? Classic. Oh, it was the seminar's fault. It's got nothing to do with the fact that I, you know, drink all day and beat the crap out of her every night, you know? <laughs> like, it's, it's the seminar's fault, right? But at the time, I was very resistant to this whole process. So I was like, ah, you know, I don't want to go. This is a great excuse not to go. I'll blame the seminar, right? And uh, I got a call from a friend of mine, a guy named Scott, who uh, I used to play golf with. I was living in Arizona at the time. And Scott, and Scott was calling me to see if I could play golf. And I was like, oh, man, I will have nothing more than to play golf with you this weekend. But I have to go to this stupid seminar. And he's like, well, what is it? And I kind of described it. And he's like, oh, he's like, is it the, is it the basic seminar from, from Sci Seminars? And I was like, yeah, it, it actually it is, as goofy as that seems. And he said, oh, you have to go do that, man. And he's like, you absolutely have to go do that. He said, I did it a couple of years ago. They've got some more advanced courses. I've done some of the advanced courses. And I was like, okay, wow, that's interesting. Because Scott was a guy I had a ton of respect for. One of the things I noticed about Scott right away was that if he was even going to be, if there was even a chance that he might be a few minutes late to meet me somewhere, he would always text me. And I was like, God, what a way to honor my time. Like, even if you just think I'm going to, maybe I might be a couple minutes late. And I was, I just had always noticed that about him and a lot of other characteristics. Just an incredible, um, a man with a lot of integrity and a guy that I became really close friends with. And I was like, okay, uh, I will listen to you. I will take your advice. And I will go to this silly, stupid seminar and sit there and learn nothing. And I got there and I walked in and I was full of judgment and I looked around and I saw all the stupid people at the stupid seminar who, and I 
made judgments about everybody in the audience saying how broken they were and how you know messed up everybody is because that's the only people who attend seminars like this. Broken people do personal development. I was a lawyer. I wasn't broken. There was nothing wrong with me. Um, it didn't take more than a couple hours for me to recognize how mistaken I was in that worldview. The, the truth was that uh, this was August of 2008. My dad died in November of 2007. And so I'm less than a year out from the death of my dad. And I hadn't dealt with it. I, I had shoved all this crap under the carpet and expected that it was just going to go away. If I ignore it, it'll go away. And it was really ruining my life. My inability to, to, to come to terms with what had happened in our relationship uh, was really tough. And I, I just was ignoring it, hoping that it would go away. <clears throat> Meanwhile, sitting in judgment of other people talking about how broken they were. I mean, it was just kind of a jerk, you know, to be completely honest with you. Which if you come and see me live, I'll talk about it a little bit more. Uh, probably a little bit more uh, using some expletives. But... Um, so I went to that seminar and it really changed things for me. The, the biggest thing, I, I, first of all, it introduced me to personality types, um, which has become a foundation of what I teach. Like if you work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I will have you read a book called Personality Plus, written by a woman named Florence Littauer. I'm going to grab it because it's right here. I, think. Yep. I keep it by my desk. That's how much I use it. I'll have you read this book. And I'll have you read this book because it will help you understand your personality type. And then you'll know how to communicate with people who have different personality types than you. I learned that at the seminar. And I was like, whoa, I thought I was super weird. I thought there were two types of people in the world. The first mm -hmm. type of person was that somebody who thought, acted, and behaved just like me. And the second type of person was just an idiot. <laughs> it was really kind of my worldview. That's a really tough way to work in a relationship business. Okay, and, and, and plug people into the sports system. I talked to you about the importance of relationships in this business and how this is fundamentally a relationship business. Well, I was not in a very good position to build relationships with people because I was sitting in judgment of everybody. That was a big one. The other one was just a person accepting responsibility. You know, just understanding that everything that's happened in my life is my fault. Good and bad. You know, I get to take credit for all of it. Yay. And I was able to really stop. And it was the time when I was able to really stop, hit, hit the pause button on my life and start to look, okay, uh, you know, what the rewind button is when I'm going to stay away from, you know, what's happened has happened. I have to come to terms with that stuff and I have to take responsibility for my role in all of these relationships. But I hit the fast forward button and I started to look forward and I went, okay, let's just, my dad was 62 when he passed away. And I thought to myself, okay, what if, I'm 62 years old and I keep doing what I'm doing, which I was able to boil down. My law practice was basically pushing paper around making money for other people, you know, hanging up on people and, and generally being kind of a jerk. Um, and which world that my old personality played really well there, <laughs> uh, but it wasn't going to play well here. And so I looked at the future and, you know, the law firm that I was working at, there was one guy who had it really sorted out and he had a, he had a great family. He had a great marriage. He had great kids. Uh, he was a community, he was involved in his community. I mean, just a fantastic guy. And one, the rest, not happy people. Just really not happy people, a variety of things. You know, alcoholics, drugs, uh, divorces, um, combinations of those things. Very alienated from their kids. Sometimes a combination, sometimes a variety. But I, again, just a group of people who fundamentally weren't very happy. Um, mainly because they just spent their entire day fighting with each other. You know, that's what lawyers do. So... And that was where I really recognized, I don't want to do this anymore. <clears throat> I do not want to practice law anymore. I wasn't sure that I was going to be a coach, but I was sure that I wasn't going to do that anymore. I was actually thinking about being a teacher. Um, at the time, I didn't recognize that being a teacher is exactly what we do here. You know, you learn, practice, succeed, and teach. And so um, I have had an opportunity to be a teacher, with, I think, which I think is really awesome. And it's like kind of my calling in life. Um, Less than a month after I went to that personal development seminar, the world economy crashed. Lehman Brothers declared bankruptcy on September 15th of 2008, and my law practice was toast. And so I had nothing to really hold on to, you know, and so it was time for me to really move and get up. Had I not gone to that personal development seminar, I really don't know how I would have reacted to that. And after that, I went on to do some of those advanced classes as well. <laughs> 
personal development has really been a foundation of what I do. I'm constantly reading something, constantly learning something. Aside from just my own personal story and the impacts it's had on my life, I want to leave you with a couple of things. The first one is to understand that there's really kind of two types of personal development. There's mindset stuff and there's skill set things. It's important, so guys. an example of a mindset thing might be books about personal responsibility. That's, that's a mindset thing. That's about how you think, right? The ability to control your mind and stay positive. Those are mindset things. The ability to like continue to work hard. The ability to take a difficult situation and look for, you know, some people would say the silver lining. I understand that every time things are hard, I have more opportunity. Gary Player was one of the most famous golfers that ever lived. And Gary Player said he always liked to play in the rain. And people are like, why do you like to play in the rain? It's like, oh, it's not that I like the rain. It's just that when it's cold and rainy and miserable, half the field quits. So it's harder for me to play in the rain. But half the guys have quit. So I'm only playing against the other half of the guys who are willing to go and suffer. That's how I've learned how to think. That's mindset, right? That's mindset. And there are a lot of books about mindset. I also think you need some skill set stuff. I'll tell you, personality plus for me is a skill set thing. Becoming an excellent communicator and building relationships with people is a skill set for sure. People think it's inherent. It's not. I was bad at it. I learned how to do it, and that book is really the one thing that helped me more than anything else I can really identify other than that seminar I just talked about. Um, but skill set, I think, also includes fitness and nutrition. That's what we do. You know, we're fitness and nutrition coaches. So I, I spent a lot of time. I read Mark Sisson's books, uh, The Primal Blueprint, and, and the Twenty One Day. I can't remember the other name of it. Uh, I read a lot of books about sports performance because that's my thing. I read a lot of books about nutrition and how that all works. Books about you know, you know, well, the paleo diet or this, you know, the um, you know, vegetarianism. Lots of different things so that I can understand all this stuff. So when people come to me, I can go, oh yeah. You know, I'm not an expert in that field, but I know a little bit about it. I can talk to you about that. That's personal development, working on that skill set. I think skill set stuff also for me became learning how to uh, how to work on the internet. You know, how to, I didn't have a Facebook page in 2008 when I went to that seminar or when the market crashed. I didn't have a Facebook page until Thanksgiving in 2008. It's when I opened my Facebook page. I knew nothing about the internet. I didn't have a YouTube. I didn't have Twitter. Or Instagram didn't even exist. <laughs> you know, and I mean, much, you know, it took me a long time to get comfortable filming videos, it took me a long time to learn what to do with them. Email marketing, blogging, all that type of stuff, which helps you grow your business. That's all personal development. So as you look. Okay. So guys, a lot there. So let's talk about the skill set versus mindset. And I want to get an idea as we close out our call here. What are you what do you feel like right now and have everybody this could be an all skate remember that back in middle school um but an all skate where and i'm gonna unshare the screen there we go love to hear like where you are at if you feel like mindset right now or if you feel like skill set is where you should potentially more be at as it relates to your your pd pd journey at this point so uh so many of you like to share first Love to hear. Uh, if you, are you more? You need some more skills. You need more a mindset. Where, where are you at, Jen? It looks like you. Yep, I can share with you. I got, yeah. Sorry, I got a little one that's upset. Um, so I think right now that I'm doing more of the skill set because my mindset is pretty darn good. She's so sad. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm actually reading a book called Spirit Junkie though, and it's really just about you know just your inner self, your inner ego, and not the psychological version. But it kind of what it's doing for me on that side is it's teaching me how I think and that's huge in mindset. But then um, I also have been reading something called the referral engine, which is something that I need help on in my business. I'm trying to figure out how to build my funnel and I'm trying to figure out um, just, you know, kind of where to get those referrals or how to ask for them appropriately, you know, in my, in my post or whether, you know, it's just asking friends, Hey, do you know anybody who would like to uh, maybe be a part of this? And so this skill set is what I'm working on right now. And I'm finding that indulging in books that I don't understand exactly how to do something really helps. So just finding something you're not good at and reading about it will make you almost a master if you just keep going at it. Yep. And there's so, so much available guys. I mean, come on. 20 years ago, like where, where would we go? Like when you go to like 
the library and have to get stuff or, you know, get on, go to a bookstore and have to buy something, you know, now like instantaneously audiobooks instantaneously right to your phone, right to your phone for that. Also, you know, Kindle stuff right to your, right to your reader or whatever, that kind of stuff. Good. Who else? Nicole, how about you? Where are you at? Podcast. That's another one too. Can you hear me? Sure. Okay. Um, honestly, I think I, I really do need both, but I think the most important thing for me right now is mindset because uh, what goes along with mindset is belief or lack of belief. And yeah. that's just kind of been like the, the hole that I've been stuck in for, you know, several months is the lack of belief. And that's all, I mean, it all comes from your mind. Yep. And so, yeah, definitely mindset is when he said the two differences, I never thought of it that way. So yep. I was like, I wrote it down and yeah, mindset for sure. Yeah. And, and guys, the, the truth is you can have all the skills you want. You can be really, really great at something potentially, but if your mind, like you said, if your mindset doesn't believe it, you probably just, it's just not, you're not going to, you're not. And I, so what's the word? What, what you think about comes about. I heard, I've heard that said a lot. What you think about comes about. It's like when you have that kind of, I believe it's like, well, yeah, this is a valuable, you know, valuable thing where things are happening. People are changing lives. Are lit. It starts to happen that way, right? That's what happens. That's what, and, and when you start to see and then have gratitude, like for me, it's like I just, I signed a discount coach today. I'm signing a discount coach today uh, from a challenger who absolutely loves our, pro, loves what we do in our, in our groups, loves what we do in our groups. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I had, you know, and I, and it's, you know, I, truthfully, it's not been like droves of people coming right now at this point, but having a solid person like that come in and just experience a really great challenge and she's turning her life around. Man, that's just, I'm so grateful for that. Kind of thing. so, yeah. And then that kind of fuels my belief. But yeah, it's good. Um, anybody else here want to share? I won't ask everybody because we're getting pretty close to time. Uh, Melissa, how about you? You want to share a little bit? Uh, sure. I, I was just kind of kind of looking this over. Um, I'd say I'm I'm a little bit of both, but I'd say more so in the uh, skill set area. You know, I've, I've got the mindset, and I'm doing a lot of uh, uh, professional development, uh, reading a couple of different books that right now. One of them on I just started is the uh, Compound Effect. Nice. Yep. So I, I just uh, just started that one. Uh, I just finished uh, the uh, 12, 12 week. Uh, Goals yep. yep, that one. I just finished that one. So I, I think I, you know, in regards to mindset, I've, I've got the, the right mindset, but I'm, it's more the skill set is, is where I'm at um, and where I need more, more help. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So do you feel like you have the, what skill set you're particularly looking to accomplish, I guess? Not, I'm, I'm still kind of struggling. I, I think for me, it's like, I, this, this, this whole call is very beneficial because it's been Jennifer, all the information you gave. I was like, Oh my gosh, I finally <laughs> something that kind of like helped me with like the scripting. Cause that's where I'm really stuck at yeah. is, is how to really put myself out there more. So, yeah. um, I, you know, it's hard. It's, it's hard for me to step outside of the box for me. Um, and, and really connect a lot. I mean, I've got people asking me, what are you doing? Um, which has been really cool, but then my, my shy side comes in. Mm -hmm. And so trying to like come out of my shell and talk more about it um, has really been where, where I struggle. So. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think so. And there's a couple things there, you know, it's like, uh, there's a book called quiet power. Um, have you heard of quiet power yet? Mm -hmm. It's the, um, it's the power of the introvert. Okay. Uh, and how there is actually a strength that is tends to be in that. Um, and then you just have to leverage it. Well, funny thing is a lot of the top coaches guys, you would think are super extroverted or whatever, but they're actually, it's very, uh, that was called quiet power is the name of it. Uh, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, my daughter's read it cause that's her kind of her jam. Um, okay. and, uh, or that's who she is. Uh, and she was actually given it to my wife who's way more introverted than me, which is, you might not register that if you ever watch our videos or if you've ever seen us on stage, that kind of a thing. You think, oh my gosh, she's so, and she's so 
like way back and I'm like, hey, there's a tree, let's talk. Well, um, and, that's, and that's the thing, if you give me a microphone and ask me to sing, I'm, I, I'm all for it and I can do it and, and you want That's more like Lisa, yep. yeah. Yeah, but ask me to do more that one-on-one -on -one. and you know, even though I'm a teacher, yes, I work, you know, I work with special needs, I don't have the, the anxiety, you know, working with these kiddos as I do when I'm talking to just every day. So like even talking with you right now, even though I know you're on the computer, yeah. <laughs> you're another state away. I'm like having anxiety here. Oh, okay. And, and but that's, that's but that, like, like we've talked about, that's just, a, that's over, over time and just practice mm -hmm. as you start mm -hmm. to get more comfortable with that. And, mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, when it comes to like you mentioned making videos and stuff like that, it's like I remember when I initially started this thing, guys. I was you, you'd be, and I just I've, I've shown it before, but I did this five. It was um, a series of I did five videos in five days. It was like five words on fitness in five days, okay? And I did like drink, sleep, whatever. And I was literally, this is so funny. Cause now I can like riff on that so much. Just like, just give me a one or two thoughts and I could just riff on it for like probably longer than you want to hear. I literally had it above my, the, the computer and I had like the list typed out, you know what I mean? Or whatever. Right. I'm like, and because water is good, you should drink more of that water. And <laughs> it, was like, it was like so bad, but over time I really developed it just because my mindset started to, to kind of shift is like, no, no, I actually have some stuff of value to offer to people. Right. And then it was just, and then I just started to learn some of the mechanics of, okay, well, what does it mean to put together a fast script and what can you do a fast script on three thoughts and then not have to look at your notes? Because right. that's the thing that's really annoying. If you've ever watched a video, when somebody's making it and you know they're speaking from notes and you watch mm -hmm. it's like i can feel like they're reading a powerpoint to me you know what i mean or something right. versus they're more conversational oh i've got three points i have enough knowledge in this area that i can sort of talk about it and that starts to make it more conversational and people get to know your personality so mm -hmm. again that's a specific example as it relates to that that works yeah all right, well, guys, um, I think we're gonna we're gonna call it. It's about time, and I will post this in the coach uh, coach club as well. So I hope you were challenged tonight. I hope you'll take an action step based on this. Maybe find some PD. I actually found one for me. Um, I just found a. There's a. Um, this guy's a. He's a Christian author, but he's very very funny. He uh, his, his name is John Acuff. A C U F F. So he's, uh, he's a very funny guy, but the, uh, the book is actually called finish. That's, that's the whole thing is like the power to ultimately finish something starts to empower you and your belief, right? Cause guys, that's, I think that so, so many people, we start so many things and, and think about that in your challengers, how many people in your, in your world. And I think if you even talk to people about this concept of finishing, the goal, guys, is not perfection. Let's just freaking finish. You know, do your best and try to finish something. Clean week, seven days. If you do that, your chances are you're going to probably consider moving beyond that and doing it. But if you go two days and then you, ah, I'm tired, I'm not going to do it. It's like, yeah, and then you're going to do the same thing over and over and over again. So he's talking about the power of finishing. So I'm really looking forward to listening to that book. I uh, just downloaded it on Audible, uh, and um, that's that's a great membership that I love. So. All right, so guys, hope you have a fantastic week, and uh, we will see you next week. Sneak peek is up, okay, on the 30th, um, so that is the day before Halloween. Uh, so if you have people who are interested, challengers who are interested, people who might benefit from the financial opportunity of this, who just have kind of a good vibe about them, um, why don't you ask them? Why don't you ask? It's not that, you know, and it's not the end all. Ooh, guys, one last thing I wanted to mention. I just had somebody come back to me after three years off. Three years off. They were a coach. Okay? This person was a coach. They quit and stopped everything, and I can do it on my own. It's all great. And they just came back after three years off. And first of all, I love the fact that they can have the humility to go, you know what? It really was working for me because it was. 
and then she just got kind of stubborn and i my sense was my in in my spirit i sensed just kind of a talk to the hand and it was it was like almost a spiritual like no i'm gonna do things my way and I, i'm like well you can try it's fine and it wasn't just like i was pushing beach body it just was more about overall health and fitness and then she started went her own route and their whole family anyway long story she's come back um after three years so no i want to remember so as a quick reminder to you all no once doesn't mean no forever okay even after a series of yeses right so she's had she had a series of yeses and that was great and then i think a lot of us sometimes go uh she'll never uh, you know and i think if you're just consistent and you stay on board and you stay consistent with what you're doing and then the occasional ask now don't be that person who is like especially somebody who's like especially if somebody's like kind of giving you the like eh, after a lot of times you don't want to be checking in on them every month for every challenge for you but every six months yeah that wouldn't be bad i think that's reasonable and then you might be able to pull somebody who is like, yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? They'll go, I haven't been doing anything. You know, they'll come to that place where it's like, yeah, I've gained 20. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. It's time to get back. Okay, great. Let's, let's have you join another challenge. But that, you know, you see what I'm saying? So I just want to give you that reminder. That was another thing this week that really hit me strong was this gal. So she's, gonna, she's actually going to re-sign up even as a coach this Friday. So that's, um, that's kind of a cool thing. So I thought, um, kind of a cool celebration to think that that's happening. Guys, keep changing lives, keep making a difference, keep being consistent as much as you possibly can in the midst of your busyness. And I know it's a challenge because I'm living there right now. I'm going to give myself grace through tomorrow night and then namaste. Um, and <laughs> it'll be good. So I uh, hope you have a fantastic one, guys, and uh, have, a, have a great day, okay? We'll see you. Love you lots.